Prior to when I first decided to watch Hunter Hunter, I had constantly heard how amazing it is and that it contains one of the best arcs in all of Shonen. I've always been aware of the show's existence because I'm a fan of Yu Yu Hakusho, Togashi's other work, but I never decided to watch it, mostly because I thought it was a show about fishing and hunting bears, which didn't really sound all that appealing to me. I decided to finally give it a watch after hearing what it was all about a few years ago. The version I decided to watch first is the one most people are familiar with, 2011, and I was told repeatedly that I just have to get through the first 75 episodes, and then I'll reach the Holy Grail. While I was watching it, and seeing other people's opinions on Hunter x Hunter on Twitter, I saw that many people preferred the first four arcs of 1999 over 2011's, and that got me curious to watch that one as well. After watching both versions, I have concluded that both have their pluses and minuses, and so with this video, I want to review the series and analyze what each did right, wrong, and everything in between. I know that the manga is the best way to experience Hunter x Hunter, but this is an anime review after all. Oh, spoiler warning for those who haven't watched the show. So without further ado, let's start. When it comes to the opening themes of Hunter x Hunter, both are vastly different and do a great job at setting the tone for each version. The 2011 version is upbeat and has that feeling of grand adventure and reflects the show's playful nature. The 1999 versions, yes, versions, reflect a calm yet somber tone. There are some hits in the 1999 versions, like the ones in the York New City arc, and some misses, like the Greed Island ones. After completing 1999, I thought to myself how much more awesome it would have been if the 2011 version had multiple themes like the 99 version. Departure may set the tone well for the Hunter exams, Heaven's Arena, and Greed Island, but not so much whenever it comes to the York New City arc and the Chimera Ant arc. So, on to the meat and potatoes. The Hunter Exams arc both have very different starting points to the series. Most are familiar with Gon catching the giant fish in 2011, which is adorable and cute and all, and is to be expected of the 2011 version. I've always said the 2011 version has a vibe of being kind of like a fusion between Pokemon and Fairy Tale at the beginning. However, the 99 version opens off with Kite, saving a very young Gon and you immediately see how much darker the series is, both in the tone and color palette. And to me, this version feels like it could be in the same universe as Yu Yu Hakusho. So for those of you who are familiar with the manga, this is nothing new with Kite appearing at the beginning of the series, but I have felt like the 2011 version missed a really good opportunity whenever it came to this. Unless you are familiar with the manga or watched 99 first, Kite's first appearance in 2011 doesn't have that much impact, and just comes off as like, oh, another new character who's connected to Jing. Even with the flashbacks which does cover when he first met Gon, it doesn't have that impact I'm sure manga readers felt when getting reintroduced to Kite. I ultimately prefer how 99 opened, because we get to see Gon at such a very young age where he's vulnerable, naive, and in need of saving, whereas in the 2011 version, he's already very competent in his abilities, and everyone around him just becomes instantly impressed and enamored with him. Don't get me wrong, I love many shows that use that trope, but since there are two versions of the Hunter x Hunter anime, I can actually make the comparison and tell you which one I prefer. Getting to see Gon grow and be able to take the Hunter exams is a lot more satisfying than already seeing him at that point from the very start. With the Hunter Exams arc itself, it might not be your cup of tea if you don't like seeing characters going through numerous trials and seeing lots and lots of character introduction and development in general. If you're wanting an arc filled with fight after fight after fight that you would expect out of a traditional shonen, you might not be too satisfied. But if you like adventure arcs, this will most likely be right up your alley. I mean, 
There are fights in this arc, but they are such short-lived since Hunter x Hunter tries to treat the characters a little bit more grounded than, say, Dragon Ball Z, where characters punch each other what seems like a million times and they still get back up to fight. There's also the fact that Hunter x Hunter emphasizes strategy and intellect so as to end the fights as quickly as possible. I mean, you'd think half the characters could score at least 200 on an IQ test. But I digress. I enjoyed the Hunter exams enough for me to think it was at least a decent first arc. It has its highlights for me, such as when the group are fighting the prisoners, and when Killua and his brother Illumi reunite, and the whole drama with him being disqualified goes down. When it comes down to it, I prefer 99 for the tone being more well suited for what's happening. While I do appreciate the comedy and cute moments that are way more abundant in 2011, I think with how much death and hardship there are during the trials, 99 does a better job at portraying this arc. So before I move on to the Heavens Arena arc, I want to talk a little bit about censorship. When I first watched 99, on the surface, it seemed to be less censored than 2011, and the scene that stands out to me the most is when Killua rips out Jones's heart. Comparing Killua holding his black heart in his hand, crushing it, and seeing all the joints in his fingers snap and pop out of place, compared to what happened in 2011, where he just holds his heart wrapped up in a cloth and his claws extend out kind of like Wolverines from X-Men, it's obvious which one had more of an impact and a wow factor to it. But, as I went further on with the show, I found myself disappointed with some of the scenes, and recognized how much I preferred how 2011 handled those scenes. The number one thing that sticks out to me is Yuvo vs. the Shadow Beasts. When it comes to violence in shonen anime, and just violence in general, I view it as a way to up the drama, and intensify how dangerous or impactful the foe's attacks are. But I would say that my overall main point with this segment is that 2011 and 1999 both have their censorship issues. You manga readers will know exactly what I'm talking about. So now on to Heaven's Arena. I think that this is where both versions equal out for me, and where Hunter x Hunter goes from being just a decent show to actually starting to get good. The way I see it, this arc isn't so much about the tournament, as it is getting us familiar with the power system of the series, Nen. Without saying, Nen is definitely one of the most interesting and in-depth power systems I've ever seen in any shonen anime, and it leaves room for limitless possibilities. What I like the most about Nen is that you don't have to delve deep into the nitty-gritty details to understand how it works, but it's also very interesting to really look deep into it. It's pretty complicated when you actually get into it, but it's explained in a simple enough way to where you don't have to look deep into it, and you don't get a lesser experience if you choose not to, and that's one of the things I love about how Nen is presented. I also love Hisoka's theory about the user's dominant Nen classes being determined by personality. I enjoyed this arc a lot more than I thought I would, since it wasn't just a traditional tournament arc. And this is because of how many characters don't fully grasp Nen, and thus have huge strengths and weaknesses that can both be utilized and exploited. Yeah, Heaven's Arena itself isn't the most interesting tournament arc ever, but I think seeing Gon and Killua develop and master using Nen is ultimately what this arc is all about. I do have to say though, that Gon's fight with Hisoka is a top-tier shonen fight. I feel like at this point, I must tell you about my opinions of the main characters. With Gon, he has always felt like an Ash Ketchum type of character to me. He is definitely the most wholesome character of the four, and somehow, the 99 version has him even more wholesome than the 2011 version. All in all, he might not be the most interesting shonen protagonist ever, but nonetheless, I think he is a great main character for this series. And his drive to become a hunter in order to find his father is a solid enough of a motivation and central plot for this show. Killua is the darkest character of the group, being raised in the way of the assassin after all. Kind of like with Gon, 
99 found a way to make Killua even more morbid than he is in 2011. His friendship with Gon does bring out a side of him that isn't so angsty, which I think does a lot for making him not such a one-note character. I think this, along with character development from being friends with Gon, is why he's such a beloved character in the Hunter x Hunter fandom. Gon and Killua definitely are ying to yang to one another, and I think that the two bounce off each other really well. Leorio, the loudmouth stubborn guy, is a special case for me. Since when I first watched the show, I didn't get what the fuss was all about and why people loved him so much. However, when I watched 1999, I thought his motivations for being a hunter was way better handled. Sure, I first thought his motivations were already righteous enough, but this is a case of showing versus telling, which the latter is always the weakest way of telling a story. I was absolutely heartbroken and sympathetic when seeing him hallucinate about seeing his dead friend, and when Karapika got the full story out of him. After seeing what drives Leorio to become a hunter, instead of it being just told, I could fully understand why there's so much love for him in the fandom. Karapika, the introverted, methodical spider-hater, is in my opinion, the most likable and relatable character to me. But Kurama is my favorite character in Yu Yu Hakusho who has a very similar personality, so I was not surprised at this. I do like how Kurapika can be very compassionate and level-headed most of the time, but is also capable of flipping a complete 180 and becomes so thirsty for revenge that he becomes almost a different person. His motivations for becoming a hunter are very easy to sympathize with, especially since it's obvious how full of trauma he is whenever he sees any depiction of a spider. And seeing him have his own story arc where it basically becomes the Karapika show? You really miss him whenever he isn't present in the Greed Island or Chimera Ant arcs. Hisoka. I'm not sure whether or not I love or hate this character. I like his savagery and how he can manipulate people and situations to fit his agenda and plans, but he is also really creepy and just straight up off-putting at times. I know he gets his rocks off from having a good fight, but at the same time, he gives off some really strong pedo vibes, especially when interacting with Gon. It's pretty clear that he's supposed to fulfill some kind of ongoing rivalry with Gon, similar to Tagoro and Yusuke. It is interesting having this rivalry being an ongoing thing, and one I'm curious to eventually seeing when it reaches its conclusion, since Hisoka has implied that he plans on eventually killing Gon one day. So moving on to York New City. I was told how great this arc prior to watching the show, and I must say, it lived up and even went beyond my expectations on how much I enjoyed it. This is one where I think the 1999 and 2011 versions were great and really boils down to preference. I had been waiting since the Hunter exams to see Kurapika's desire to kill the Phantom Troop and this arc is a really good revenge story. I think the 1999 version did Kurapika's character and design more justice. His scarlet eyes actually looks scary, like it's something out of a horror anime. 1999's slower pace did well for allowing me to savor Karapika, since he is inactive in the series after this, at least in 1999. I would also say I prefer the atmosphere and backgrounds in 1999 overall, but where I do think that 2011 shines are the fights, most of the character designs, and the animation in general. In terms of the soundtracks, I think both are fantastic for their respective series, since they both reflect the era of when each anime was made. What's to say about this arc in general that hasn't been said before? I liked how the auction brought the four main characters there for their own reasons. Gon and Killua mostly take a back seat since they are there for the auction for Greed Island, but they were still utilized pretty well when involved with Kurapika's story. With Leorio, I enjoyed how his street smarts allowed him to be useful and entertaining in this arc. But along with Karapika, the Phantom Troop are the true stars of this arc. 
bringing very interesting Nen abilities to the table, and really feel like fearsome foes. I was on the edge of my seat at some points when I first watched this arc. Krollo is a pretty interesting main villain, and with Hisoka's theory, made his Nen ability really intriguing, and made him that much more interesting. You might have heard this before, but yeah, the ending was anticlimactic. But in my opinion, I don't think it was a bad ending. And after all, we do get to see more of the Phantom Troop later in the show, so there's that. So, last but not least, Greed Island. The funny thing is, when I first watched 2011, I was actually warned about this arc and how the tone of Hunter x Hunter shifts back to the feel of the Hunter exams. But I actually think a light-hearted adventurous tone is very fitting for this arc because it's supposed to be a video game, and even the serious moments are handled well. Most of the arc is in broad daylight, and all the serious moments are done in dark places. There also isn't too much dialogue, since the characters are fleshed out enough. This arc is where I think 1999 missed its mark. But it's not too surprising in this case, since 99 is very tonally consistent throughout the series. But this is one story where I feel they could have lightened up the mood. Bisky is my favorite character of this arc, and a big contributor to why I actually like Greed Island. I find her sassy, overbearing attitude to be hilarious, and is the funniest character in the show to me. I also found Hisoka teaming up with Gon, Killua, and Bisky to be fairly interesting. I do have to say, since the card game is a one-and-done type plot element, it's hard to get invested in it, especially when you have in mind that the Chimera Ant arc is right around the corner. I can fully understand how many think this arc is mediocre to bad, especially since right before this was such a dark, sublime, and thrilling story. There is also the point to bring up that it's a bit hard to care about the multi-episode dodgeball match towards the end, but I will say that Greed Island had a really strong ending with Gon vs. Genthru. Plus, the cliffhanger is a really great transition to the next arc. All in all, if you like a mostly light-hearted adventure, I think Greed Island is a pretty fun watch. Overall, which do I prefer? It may sound cliche, but I do like both about equally because of the strengths each have. The 1999 version is very consistent in its dark and realistic tone, and has that 90s aesthetic that I have such a soft spot in my heart for. There is also the fact that 1999 takes its time to get us more familiar with the characters, and develops them better than 2011. When watching 1999 after 2011, it was really easy to see the flaws in 99's animation, and how 2011 gets to Hunter Hunter's highlights a lot faster, and blitzes through a lot of the character development. I would imagine someone who watched 99 first would be really impressed with how well animated and how much better most of the fights are in 2011 and also kind of disappointed that characters like Leorio or Karapika aren't as well handled. After completing both of these renditions, I couldn't help but wonder how a 1999 Chimera Ant arc would have played out. Speaking of which, my next review will be on the remaining half of the 2011 anime. Join me next time as I review the Chimera Ant arc, and until that time, Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.